Welcome back to Darwin, capital city of the Northern Territory, which is also known as the Top End. It's the smallest, wettest and most northerly of Australia's capital cities. Darwin's close proximity to Southeast Asia makes this city a perfect jumping off point for Indonesia and all its delights, which are only a few days sail away. It's from Darwin that Rob's eldest brother Kerry began his overseas sailing adventure in 1977, never to return. Kerry's misfortune was to stray into Cambodian waters in 1978. There he was captured, tortured and murdered at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. While we have been visiting the city, Rob and the family have completed a number of radio and TV interviews about our travels and Kerry's plight, as we hope to retrace some of Kerry's footsteps from Darwin onwards, guided by the letters he wrote home to New Zealand prior to his capture. It was late 77 he set off, and uh, in mid 78 he was uh, he strayed into Cambodian waters, and his fate was sealed from that point onward. Yeah. Um, tortured and murdered by the Khmer Rouge at the notorious yeah. S21 prison. Uh, I've been to that prison, it's, yeah, it's horrific. Uh, there were probably, uh, we think, nine Westerners captured uh, during the Khmer Rouge time and they were all forced to sign confessions that they were CIA operatives. And um, I had visited S21 as well and we found the original um, confession that Kerry was forced to write and sign. Uh, it's quite... Um, it's yeah. surreal. It's utterly surreal. The city of Darwin is no stranger to tragedy. The whole place has been entirely rebuilt four times, following devastating cyclones in 1897, 1937, a Japanese air raid during World War II, and Cyclone Tracy on Christmas morning of 1974 that raised the city. Rereading Kerry's letters home from Darwin in the 1970s, we were able to make a tangible link between the city's rebuild Kerry and a Darwin school. Kerry travelled here in 1975 to Darwin to be part of the rebuild and to earn a bit of money so he could buy a boat. And to do that he formed a partnership in a concreting company. And he put the concrete pad down for this school. Amazing. So just to give some context to this story, we never found Kerry. I went to Cambodia looking for him, his remains. We have no possessions of his uh, from his time on the boat. We couldn't find the boat. He sailed on. We have nothing. Um, and being in places like the school where Kerry played a role in the rebuild, being in this anchorage, Fanny Bay, right now, where Kerry anchored his yacht, Foxy Lady, it's important to reconnect and with these letters to my brother and this journey we're on. And I think it's the same for a lot of you. <laughs> right now who have been through this pandemic and perhaps lost loved ones. Rachel for example couldn't go back to the UK to see her father, he died with COVID. Rachel's mother couldn't see her husband's dead body, she was not allowed to go in to see him to say farewell. That's a big deal and um, so this is kind of cool to be here doing this again. Although it's important to acknowledge what has been lost, we are also busy living, celebrating a milestone birthday with our beautiful middle child, Declan. Mm. Screen protector. Oh. oh, and an iPhone 12. Really? Two more seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, look at your, your birthday's better than mine. Mine was a month ago. Bit ago. You're 
Yours was not an 18. Yeah, but still, mm. I haven't even gotten any presents yet. <laughs> oh. mm, that's nice. That's a nice reaction. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's actually been so hard. I've had to keep it a secret for yeah. like a week and a half. No, only a few days. Uh, no, it was like a week. Wow. I love that reaction from Declan, but will the next part of this birthday be received with such humility? I've been caught red-handed, would you lock me up in your hands and never abandon me again? I've been calling out your name in the storm, can you hear me in the rain as it's pouring on the streets? I feel like I've been sitting here for weeks waiting on a miracle or somebody to preach to my heart. It hasn't reached to my soul. We are on a road trip! A roadie! We're going to Kakadu National Park. We're going by a Humpty Doo. By a Humpty Doo. Can I you love believe it? There's a town called Humpty Doo. It sounds great. I love the sound. Yeah. And there's Jim a Jim. shop called Pie Face. Can you believe that? No, that's, Face. A, that's in New Zealand as well. Is it? Yeah. No. Yes. It is. Really? Yeah. Do you guys ever remember the pie faces? Yes. Yes. Uh, really? Oh, yeah, no, it's no, no, I think it's Madden. Jokers. I think it's Jokers. Yeah, Jokers. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No pie face. Oh, We've been in Australia too long. Oh, yeah, I reckon. Um, but we are going to stay. But on the pies, the Ever and Raglan, P says butter chicken pie. Oh. <laughs> Carry on, Rachel. What is amazing, and what I'm really looking forward to, and I know the boys are looking forward to it too, uh, is uh, Kakadu <laughs> National Park it has an awful lot of. Yeah. Aboriginal art, some dating back tens of thousands of years. So I'm looking forward to that, and the waterfalls, and the swimming holes, and it's Declan's birthday. Declan's 18. What a treat. What boy doesn't want to go and look at Aboriginal art on his 18th birthday? You're welcome, Declan. You are welcome. As I was sitting there damaged Then you came with your arms wrapped around me like a bandage How can I thank you for what you've done? A payment is equivalent to a half grain of sand And all I can do is thank you Cause I'm out of fact it's Paid all my debts by the grace of the sun The grace of the sun If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was chained If I was chained If I was chained just walking oh, up to crazy, the Bawali Visitors so Centre here in Kakadu National Park to get our permit. It costs $100 for a family to stay in the park for seven days, I believe. So that's what we're after. What I don't understand, I, I know they're burning off the undergrowth to prevent worse fires, but how do they control that fire? How do they stop that one getting completely out of control and taking over? I know that they probably look at what the um, weather's going to be that day. But what happens if like, someone had thrown a big tip of oil in there? And <laughs> the fuel <laughs> runs out there. It turns out. It takes heat, dryness, and ignition and fuel. Yeah, but how come these so, trees don't? Well, all the just trees don't. Up? They just don't. They just don't catch light. Why don't they catch light? They're trees. Listen to this. So Here comes my birthday. Story. My birthday was a month and get month your tissues and, ready. A month and a like month and a quarter ago. In 800 meters, no presents, still haven't gotten any presents, okay? Declan wakes up, two minutes after waking up, gets an iPhone. Well, Declan number one is 18, you were only 15. Yeah, 15. We you were... need some presents for 15. Like, <laughs> no, you didn't on, get any presents. Right? <laughs> but that's because you, what you wanted we had to order, then you, you got decided we were going to order it. Yeah, and then you decided issue, that's yeah. not what you wanted, and so we're waiting to hear what you do want. Yeah. There's what do you a lot of waiting to hear what I do. I've, I've, I've told yes, you sir. every single day for the past <laughs> week. I know, and now we're looking into that. We're looking into that. Second, but first of all, it was knee camera. pads. It was going to be knee pads for scootering. Yeah, no, but that's not logical because we're, we're going to leaving the country. He had a box of multis. He's so unloved. That your tradition. What, what, what is a kid what? So unloved, Ivan. Actually, they're fattening me up, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what comes <laughs> next. <laughs> Dogo dingo. Yeah, that's how true said it. That's a dingo. Is that dingo? was a dog in the wild. No, I, I think mean, dingoes have big ears. That was 100% a dog. That was not a dingo. But dingoes are dogs. Yeah, yeah but, but they look way more feral. different, you can tell. We've just been to Jibberu. Jibberu. And we have food. And we're now going to our campsite. We had hoped to go to the Jim Jim Billabong campsite, but all those campsites apparently are closed. Too many crocodiles. Too many crocs in the water. Um, it's just after the wet season and so the crocodiles can get in up the, the rivers <laughs> and uh, they have to go and do a survey and check how many crocodiles are out and about um, and they haven't done the survey yet so they close those all off. So we're off to a different place. We're going up to Ubia, Ubia. art site. It's one of the most prolific art sites in the Northern Territory and also there's a rock up there a rock that you sit on and watch the sun go down not the so, rock not the rock <laughs> no it's not the rock Hudson is his name Hudson? Rock Hudson no rock no Hudson. what's the rock surname? Rock Hogan? The rock no oh, just the rock oh, Johnson. Johnson Rock Johnson, oh, Johnson. Rock Johnson. Rock. oh that's Hulk Hogan Johnson. Johnson. Rock. Hulk Hogan not Hulk Hogan <laughs> I'm mixing my I was actually meaning the rock Which of rock? Australia. The rock. There's only one. Uluru. 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 No, it's not Uluru. It's definitely so not. So just to clarify, it's not Uluru or Hairs Rock. We're not that far south. Not that rock. We're going up to a sure. rocky outlook <laughs> to watch the sun go down <laughs> over the Nadab floodplains. Aboriginal people have lived around Ubir for over 20,000 years, recording important events in their lives through the medium of rock paintings. The art is incredibly well preserved considering that some of these pieces have been exposed to the elements for thousands of years. In places, a bead of silicon has been added to rock shelter roofs, creating a drip zone that protects the art from wet season rains. Ubir is famous for its colourful fish paintings in x-ray style and thin human figures engaged in hunting, running and ceremonial dance. According to Aboriginal rock painting expert David Welch, many of these human figures are considered to be Mimi, good spirits that live among the crevices in the rocks and only become active at night. Mimi are credited with teaching the original First Nation people how to hunt, cook and make weapons. This open-mouthed Mimi, known as the Red Dancer, is carrying spears in his hand and has a dilly bag around his neck. When compared to photos of ceremonial dancing poses still used today, it's easy to see where the artist got his inspiration. So, right up there, how oh, it got up there, that's a Tasmanian tiger or thylacine. And you know it's a tiger because it's got some stripes at the back, it's not a dingo. But, uh, that's thought to be about 4,000, 5,000 years old, that painting, because they pretty much died out, didn't they? Think? Yeah. They used to roam, roam the land and they ate wallabies and kangaroos and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and, well. and then I guess got eaten by the... Well, dingo, they say the dingo population caused a, when they, take, they came across from Indonesia, and the dingo population grew and the, the t tiger population decreased. So I guess the pack hunting was probably an individual animal, we suspect, and I'm suspecting that. And uh, the dingo was a pack animal hunting in numbers, overwhelming it. And then humans came along and probably did the final doodah. Thank you for that, Robert. And I think the last Tasmanian tiger of thylacine died in captivity in 1934 in Tasmania. That's hence Tasmania tiger is what they were called. But they were a lot smaller than what we think of as a tiger these days. Impressive art though, isn't it? It's How did really they get impressive. it so high? Okay, let's go watch the sun go down. We obviously weren't the only people that thought, hey, let's go to this place at sunset. Oh, that sounds like a really good idea. I think there'd be many people there at sunset, but I feel like this would be a really remote area. Yeah. Not an original idea. Very few ideas are original, Ivan. Very few. 
I got nothing to repay you Besides my life laid down as a tribute I hope it continues From Rome to Japan No matter the distance I follow your plan Ruling terrain and a fortune of fame Richer or poor No matter the name It don't faze me Cause only you faze me If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was chained If I was Most newly crowned 18 year olds would be at the pub right now. Not me. Not you. Not cool. Oh, I don't know about that. You have spent the day looking at ancient rock art with both your parents and your brother. And now we're watching the sun go down. You should feel pretty good about that. Alright. You don't have to follow the gang. You've got the rest of your life for going to the pub. This is a pretty special day, a non-fungible asset. Happy birthday, Declan. Making memories. Happy birthday. Oh, there's a little, there's a little, little sugar thing. It's a little marsupial. It's not a mouse in the strictest sense. Should I grab it? Oh, it is a little marsupial. I think they're called quoll. They're very friendly. I think it's called He quoll. smelled the goods. So we've got some chicken bone here. Is it, it's not a sugar glider, is it? No, I think it's a quoll. I don't know, actually. Pretty That's happy with that. He's like, oh, this is Christmas. This is like, it's like birthday time. Okay, so Declan's birthday it. dinner. He's found a green ant. He's seen the old fella have a crack at it. He thought, well, if the old fella can have a crack, let's see it. Can you hold it still? Hold it. Hold still. Hold it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Here it is. Where you go. That is zesty. Yeah, isn't mm. it? They're quite nice. I had one too. I thought it was stinging me at first. Well, it might be. Can, I would have been. So proud the boys, first or the, at least one of the boys, yeah, nice, following father's footsteps. What about you, Dick? Ivan? You never go? Green ant? Mm, no, I just yeah, drop stuff nice. in the water. <laughs> huh? I'm following you in different ways. I drop vital parts, yeah. engine parts in the water. <laughs> Very good. Proud dad. What I love about these areas is you're just thinking of thousands of years ago, the indigenous Australians walking through this area and just the stories these rocks could tell. And they do tell because in the, ra in the dry season, they have rangers who come out and tell the stories and, and give you what the art means. That's in the dry season. This is the dry season. They start doing that next week, which is so annoying. We'd love to know what this all means. All you need is a couple of crocodiles and the boys are happy. They now want to stay longer. Before it was moaning and groaning, let's get going. Now it's, let's stay and look at the crocodiles. <laughs> Magic recipe. Tell me, Ivan, um, I know you had done by with your birthday present, but what did you remember what you got last year? Jake got a new phone. <laughs> Oh, Ivan! For oh. Ivan's birthday, I got a new phone. Well, I get the year before that. And he got my hand me down. No, Actually, no. Declan. You got a new phone. I got a new Declan phone. Got, got your hand me down. Yeah. Yeah. Declan, yeah. Ivan got Declan. 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 Same to you. For Ivan's birthday. Yeah, no, but. Yeah, no, no, but. You, I mean, you, you wanted, wanted that phone. You wanted Poor that phone. Poor Ivan. Poor Ivan. And what did I get last? The year before that when I turned 30. I don't think I really got anything, did I? No, I you think know. I got anything. No, you got, <laughs> oh, that's right. you got a hug. They got you a shirt and then we put it on. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a shirt. And then Ivan didn't want his own to go back. I can and go ahead and wear some shirt. shirt. What got you? <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps. Come on, eat it, it's so bad.